August of 43, and you can see the Germans have uh, thrown a quick cordon around the U.S. landing here. Very, very rough. You know, this ain't great terrain. And little pockets up here, a little pocket down here. It's going to be tough for the Allies to break through this. Meanwhile, that's going to allow the Germans actually enough points maybe to buy back their surprise attack, which is kicking here. That'll be helpful when Russia comes back in, plus one in a two hex radius. I'm not counting on doing any invasions with the Germans, but getting that extra bonus at least once more in the game. It's not huge, but it is, uh, it is the kind of thing that you can maybe turn turn a, an otherwise ugly campaign around for. The Russians have one of theirs kicking around down here, unfortunately. Well, they're not going to be able to buy that back anytime soon. <laughs> so here on the Allied turn, things have been getting a little bit more subtle, actually. Uh, so you have, you know, like Allied air coming up here to start doing counter air here. This is really just costing the Germans production, but if they can't, if they don't pay it or can't pay it, um, there is a possibility of making a crossing here and getting some convoys in and really threatening um, the whole Balkans. The Italian campaign, not so rosy, actually. Uh, although the Allies have pushed forward, they managed to shove this ahead. They used uh, something for it. Which counter? They used an airdrop. And luckily got to keep their airdrop. Ah, uh, remember it goes away permanently on a six. To dislodge from the one hex and then uh, they also pulled more air power in. I gotta pay my supplies for this and that's gonna be kind of a bitch. Um, counter air against this. I'm not actually using this unit. Probably should actually consider it. The problem is one, two, three, four. I've got German air support down to here. The other thing you might notice is we've got a bombed marker with the U.S. planes in play. I launched uh, raids and found out, well, they're not that hard to hit the stuff in the, uh, in the Rhineland area. Uh, because where I've placed my German planes, they don't have a lot of hexes they can intercept in. So basically I can only intercept two hexes on the incoming. Now, before that was always uh, enough. But now with two planes coming in, that's a little more painful. So we managed to get one successful bomb. That's going to be a plus one to the strategic warfare. But more damage to the Allies than uh, to the German planes. Until I can get fighters in place to suppress the German fighters, this is always going to be kind of a painful trade-off. But that's okay. Uh, I can afford the trade-off. Uh, probably the Germans can too. But <laughs> if the Russians were in the war, it would be a very different thing. All right, I've got some supply, and I have to think if I want to launch this attack. It doesn't cost me any, any, uh, anything really to do so. So with the U.S., it would be uh, the big old plus three, down one for the terrain. For the Germans, a plus two. Uh, I don't really have anything to support myself with, but it's kind of worth it. Um, if I push them out, is there something I can do? I don't think I have any units that I could slide in there. So there's not a lot of value to this, but if I get an extreme result, it's worth uh, something, I guess. Um, it might do some damage. So I get a, uh, let's say the whites, the Germans, six to four, which probably isn't very extreme. That's gonna force the Germans to retreat. Now. That loosens the cordon a little bit, but doesn't really do anything beyond that. And I don't really have another attack to make. This one's even at worse odds, and the air power can come in, so I'd rather not do it. It didn't cost me anything, but I don't want to advance into this hex, because that'll give out my supply port. I would want to do that if I had a follow-up unit to push into that port. Right now, I don't have that. I'm setting it up with this garrison unit that'll help me to be able to have a mobile force and somebody holding my supply source. The problem, of course, is if it's just a damn garrison, you know? I really need another port. Naples 
if I can get that, it's going to be a big bonus. That'll be a third port down here, which will really help me with the supply situation. Still going to be tough fighting my way up the boot, though. As we push into September with bad weather coming around the corner. <laughs> that makes Italy even harder. Um, yeah. Historically, it was a hell of a campaign. Um, anyway, uh, we got some new units spread out on the turn track. What we do have that's kind of interesting was the play for the diplomacy. The Russians actually saved enough money to play in the diplomacy realm down here. Um, the Axis went first. They had an interesting choice. There was a political failure in the cup and a pro-Western in the cup. Now, they could take the, if they draw the pro-Western, that's great. That cancels what they, that, that gets what they want out of the cup. The political failure, though, would cause Spain to go pro-allied. And with an equal chance of either, it didn't feel particularly useful for me to draw that. And I figured the Allies would draw that, so I actually uh, didn't have to worry too much about saving the money. Because I didn't have the cash after all the air repairs to build my surprise attack, but I have plenty of cash outside of that. Uh, so I threw a couple of no events in to try to delay this. If I can keep Spain out of the war, that's great. If I can't, I've got some real serious problems here. Well, the Allies went for a draw, and they got a no event out. Uh, and then the uh, Soviets decided to throw a political success in, improving the chances. Because here's the thing. When you're politically on the offensive, it's really to your best idea. It's in your best interest to get the, the successes into the cup. When you're politically on the defensive, or diplomatically on the defensive, you want to tie up the cup. There's sometimes when it can be kind of wild and wooly. Uh, at the beginning of this game, I think there was some kind of, eh, it's okay if they get an ally. Uh, I'm going to try to play for my allies. So both sides really had positives in the cup, and they both wanted to draw. So that, that was a kind of different nature. But at this point in the game, it feels pretty... Uh, s certain that the Axis isn't going to gain anything major out of getting uh, successes. Sweden is the closest they could do to modify their uh, naval, uh, their, their, their strategic warfare plans. And that looks out of reach, really. Uh, especially if the Allies are going to spend their own actions to remove it, rather than, although they might not if Spain is, is ready to be activated. All right. We move on. The Germans spent a considerable amount of effort here in uh, September, right down to the wire, really, last possible die roll, throwing the Yanks out of Genoa. Because it was the last possible die roll, though, I pulled some extra air support into the, into the fight. I had three units against an isolated uh, American unit. <sighs> one by one, they went in there, and it just... There wasn't anything the Allies could really do to support that. It was a, a stupid location to be in. They would have been a lot better off if they had landed, say, in Rome instead of Genoa, which they could have actually done. And that would be a kind of an end run, really uh, degrading the value of this whole position here that the Germans are in. And that means the Allies have to march up the coast or nothing. <laughs> Unless they can turn around and get themselves uh, some sort of uh, additional uh, foothold on the continent. That shows why the, um, what the Anzio landings were so far south, rather than trying to establish another beachhead further north. And if you ever play uh, Anzio, you'll find that, that game, oh, and I don't have another full Italian campaign game. Uh, it shows the same kind of situation. It's really tough to establish. Anzio is hard enough to hold with some potential support in terms of not direct, but at least allied units were operating close enough in the vicinity and the air could come to support. Here, we were just cut off with nothing to do and the Navy had to flee back to Turin, or to Tunis, sorry. Turns near where my dad was born. Allied assaults on what kind of amounts to close to the Gustav line, um, failed. Even with a lot of air support, we didn't get any, mainly we didn't get Naples, that's the B. Uh, Naples could have opened things up, but supply-wise, not that big a deal. I was thinking about trying to do an invasion 
um, with this crappy little British unit once I get the invasion marker back in my uh, pile or transporting it into play uh, to reinforce to help me you know if I if I was extending Genoa for example was really the idea behind that but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna you know, I'm just gonna low supply it because it doesn't look likely that it's gonna be coming in to help at any point uh, in the near future I chose not to do counter air down here basically I'm gonna recover get whatever little you know reduce the advantage the Germans have as much as possible Perhaps the biggest success that I had with the Allies was a couple of bombing runs. I managed to bring their plane down all the way. I've got the capability to do more bombing. But you don't really want to do that. Um, it's not like more bombing is better. I mean, it is, but not at the cost of resources that you, can re that you have to rebuild each turn. Because the strategic combat results means this marker is going to move at most once by the ally, Western uh, Allies die roll for strategic warfare. So, you know, right now I've got a plus two on the die roll. The plus one didn't do me any good, but maybe the plus two will. And I need to recoup a little bit and get things back. So basically what we're looking at here is a plus four, U.S. is in the war, plus two bombing, versus plus two, Germany still holds, you know, a port on the Atlantic. So, and that pretty much uh, seems like a good edge and something I don't want to spend more for. If I get more bombers in play, fine. But right now, I've overwhelmed their air power because they shifted down to knock me out of Genoa. Soviets aren't going to have much to do, so I'll come back at the end of the turn. Excitement in the diplomacy phase. Now, remember... None of this would happen in the historical situation because in the historical situation, the Soviets and the Western Allies were both at war uh, with the Germans, starting with Barbarossa, and it never ended. Here, because of the defeats of the Soviets, we have this kind of, hey, maybe people could be convinced into the war. And that's, you know, a design decision of, hey, this is a what-if scenario already at this point, once the Soviets are knocked out of the war. How do we keep the game kind of interesting? Well... One way is to let you keep pulling from the event chits, and the Germans picked the wrong chit, a political failure. The Allies then threw... Eh, Franco joins the war on the Allied side. Not good. <laughs> That's the new front that we've been looking for. Um, I may not be able to hold up and defend Spain, but the expenditure that Germany is going to have to make on, this, uh, on, on dealing with a, a Spanish incursion is probably enough um, to weaken them significantly in the east by the time the Russians come back in. That's not that long from now. You can see in February the Russians are per potentially back in. They roll to see if they come in 50-50 each turn. Um, but yeah, this is, is a way to allow me to shift uh, more allied forces in, onto the board. Now there aren't a whole lot of more allied forces to, to bring in. I might be able to dispatch one of these armored units over there, but it's going to be pretty tough in general um, to find units. I've got two armor up here. Of course, the Americans have their rebuild, uh, which will come in next turn. It might be too late by the time I can get ground forces there, though. I do have this garrison that'll help. I have the Gibraltar garrison. I think I should be able to hold out. Spain has a national will of eight, and it has some productive capability. And it's going to take the Germans a little while to set up and, and exploit that new opening. Overall, I think it's to the Allies' advantage. Uh, anyway, the Allies throw uh, political success into the cup. The Russians managed to pull it. Instead of going for Finland, since they have Norway on their side, they add Sweden. These are mainly defensive moves, although Sweden could actually... Finland's not going to do much for the Russians. Sweden could, though, because it's adjacent to Denmark, so that would open up another potential threat uh, to have the... I don't know how big the Swedish army is, but it's got to be fair size. Yeah, it's got some real units in it, some... 
some infantry and such. Not. So that's enough to, again, make a threat. And just because Soviets are not in the war doesn't mean their miners aren't in the war. Uh, Norway can't do anything is the problem. But Sweden actually can. So let's see. Let's make sure that I'm right that it indeed doesn't mean. <laughs> uh, we can find the Moscow Treaty. A USSR unit can't do anything. And Soviet counters can't go into occupied Russia. Okay, what are we? We're the Soviet faction. USSR is the country. That's important, uh, the distinctions between country and faction. So, in particular, there's nothing that, re that restricts, I believe, the Swedes from invading Denmark. Well, or German-occupied Denmark. And, uh, you know, presenting an additional problem there. Plus, I've got the bombing campaigns underway. Overall, it looks like the Allies may have a little more up their sleeve uh, than they did just, uh, you know, a couple turns ago. Well, at the midway through this turn, when it looked like I'm blocked in Italy. Okay, so uh, as we pass through, what is this? The beginning of October of 43. The Germans... Um, Managed to launch a little bit of an attack into Spain, pushing some distance forward. Other than that, not a lot. These should be removed. Uh, I screwed up. Six, seven, eight. Uh, six, seven, eight, two, one, two, three, four, five, three. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, those bombs did not help. I'm just making sure the points didn't help now that I see them. Because I do remember the die roll. I just did it. <laughs> um, the Allies ended up losing some points here, but, you know, I'm doing some damage at least to the fighter planes that has to be bought back, or else the bombers are going to be more and more devastating. The problem is, I probably have to recoup these bombers for another turn. Uh, in terms of Spain, like I said, we pushed in, threw some strategic move in the way to defend against it. The Allies threw a strategic move up here, the Gibraltar garrison up to Barcelona, just to help there. Now, Spain has to be kind of careful. Not really. Uh, the, the Axis has no naval power, really, at this point. Uh, the only thing that they have is their surface action unit, which they just haven't been using. Keeping it in reserve in some ways is more powerful because I'm forcing the Allies to actually uh, escort things. If I make an attack, even against something unescorted, I, I may stop that single unescorted action, but then, you know, I'm out for a few turns based on however many sorties I accumulate on any attacks or anything. So it's not, it's not a terribly powerful piece, but as a threat, I may be costing the allies that escorting that maybe they wouldn't, well, that they wouldn't have to do if it wasn't on the board. Um, now I'm up to the allied turn. We're going to try to ship some stuff into into uh, Spain and start making a fight of this. And to tell you the truth, you know, the reaction came quicker than I thought, but I'm really worried that Germany's in a lot of trouble here, at least uh, we'll see. <laughs> but Spain is not the most pleasant place in the world to fight. Like Turkey, it's got a lot of terrain, like the Balkans and Italy. Uh, and, you know, trying to knock down, what is it? Eight Spanish will might be tricky, especially if it's stiffened with allied units. So we'll see what they can get in there and how quickly. This may actually have been a mistake because this is a place where I could have landed. Oh well. The allies, a little bit of counter air over here, opened things up. Not good enough to do anything with, nor to really feel terribly safe. I'm slowly moving this garrison into play. I'll probably end up replacing an armored unit with the garrison, uh, assuming the Germans don't really want to try to fight out of supply in Turkey. I feel like one armored unit is enough down there, but I need more uh, coverage than one armored unit can provide. Um, over here we see the initial landings of some US armor, and that should definitely stiffen things. I didn't do anything with the Spaniards. Not sure I really should. Uh, <laughs> 
I'm hoping they hold their line is basically what it comes down to. Uh, they have optional planes and boats for Spain and Turkey and some of the pow more powerful uh, miners, but they're all that options. They're not. Uh, the assumption is that the historical Spanish forces were not so strong. They had some navy and air power, but it was. I've discussed this before, less in comparison to uh, the nations that actually have air and naval power. Uh, and probably perfectly reasonable to use with the ground support ships. So we're setting up for the possibility of an incursion into France. Over here in Italy, you can see we flipped a couple of German units, which is kind of interesting. Now they're both going to be able to recover, unfortunately. But it gets us more uh, leverage here on Naples and possibly moving forward then back on the armored. So, you know, this army is being stretched down there rather thinly. It's an interesting choice to have not just destroyed a unit. It's not one I really made. Um, basically what happened was the terrain that the armor, the damaged armor was behind was so much worse um, that I felt it was, an adv it was advantageous to try to attack the uh, now isolated unit in Naples for the extra bonus. I just didn't have enough power. I could have thrown in my paratroopers and that, that would have been the edge uh, that would have allowed the German armor to be destroyed, but I, I didn't want to do that. We're on to the Soviets. Nothing happening over there. Uh, they're, they're just in the process of building up, so we'll stretch to the end of the turn again real quick. And as we push into November, chances are the weather's not going to hold up so well the, <laughs> there. Um, Two people actually bought, bit the bullet and bought the, uh, the big expense, both the Germans and, yeah, shouldn't be there, and the Russians bought surprise attack markers, uh, setting up for when the East Front opens up again. Uh, for the Russians, that meant they could buy nothing new. For the Germans, uh, it cost them think an air build there and that's about it uh, that they would have and a diplomatic chip which neither one wanted to take um, the Russians will probably get back into the diplomatic game the allies played the diplomatic game grabbed a no event they're looking at hey if I get Portugal uh, or something I don't know <laughs> I don't know what Portugal has it has a real infantry so that could actually come in helpful uh, the Portuguese did actually fight in the war and committed no, wait, am I mistaken there? Did they enter? One of the South American countries did. I think the Portuguese eventually did. They were pro-Nazi in a lot of ways, I, because of Franco and Spain and everything, that they had a, a strong pro -Nazi. But I think they did eventually declare war in some sense of units, and I seem to remember some. Damned if I know. I'm not the person uh, to recall that kind of minutia, especially about, you know, World War II. Uh, <laughs> I think they did, though. All right. Uh, anyway, if we can get them in, that's cool. An extra unit can always help. What's really awesome about it is it's a unit that's supplied uh, from the continent, and it also gives me another supply source, although I've got a significant number of them uh, now in Spain for the limited supply, if I have to rely on that. I also got the mulberry. That's kind of cool because if I, cho if I invade... Uh, and I don't take a port, I can set that up and it can become a temporary port. That's kind of, you know, a neat little uh, factor there to have uh, that temporary port. There are most games on the strategic level and certainly operational where the naval concerns are uh, cover that, actually. Um, it's a limited resource, though. So, you know, yes, I can only have one on the board, basically, which means I can't do a lot of adventurism. Uh, with naval actions. That's okay. It's really expensive. Well, maybe not for the U.S. with their, their infinite surprise attacks. They just they can keep generating them. All right, moving on. Now that I'm not entirely incurious, uh, actually, I looked it up. Uh, wiki, you know. But the Portuguese maintained a strict neutrality of a sort. They allowed basing in, like, the Azores and uh, actually some anti-Japanese uh, uh, occupations as well but the worry was 
the Portuguese believed that their treaty with England still existed. They had received some support from the English. But their big fear was Spain, and the English fear as well was that Spain would enter the war on Germany's side if Portugal entered as the Allied side. In November weather got crappy real fast. Uh, the Germans had to maneuver around to save this out of supply unit. They tried an attack, an assault. Didn't help. They tried some attacks against the Spaniards. Didn't help. Uh, things are looking pretty piss poor. They've had to shift some of their garrisons along the uh, Adriatic coast. They don't have a, a real navy to protect them. If an invasion is launched, I do have this. Uh, but that's really about it. So there's not a lot here uh, to really protect me. And mm, well, <laughs> there's not a lot anywhere on the German coast. So there's uh, there's a lot of risk now. The thing is, though, this is kind of where the main event seems to be. Although the breakthrough in Italy is still a possibility. The Germans have it covered right now, but if this uh, Panzer gets moved out of there and pushes the line up a little further, it gets rid of this unit. On the other hand, just getting rid of this unit might be good enough, dropping the will down. Will is how you win the game. And the Germans are at 57, but we saw how quickly the Soviet will dropped a couple of times. <laughs> um, so, you know, that's an issue. Definitely. All right, on to the various allies. We'll see uh, what the Western allies can do with their uh, activity. With this crappy weather, it's probably not a lot. Um, we do have our airdrop, though, to help us. We have a surprise attack if we want to do an invasion or if we want to just get a lot of pluses. This is probably not the turn to do that. Things over here have been weakened. The Germans pulled their armor out of the area. That makes it maybe more appealing to try to launch an attack there rather than ship more armor into Spain because the Spain into southern France, the Pyrenees, are not a pleasant thing. Just like in Italy, it's the Apennines are not pleasant. Just like anywhere where you see that mountainous terrain with dark lines going through it, that's going to be nasty shit to move through. That's two penalties against you and you start adding things like weather and it's just hell. Bad weather is bad for the Allies too. Um, I chose not to launch an attack here nor to do any kind of naval transfers as I move this unit up. <sighs> Basically once the weather is good maybe I'll do it, maybe not. Over here, we got some uh, traction against the Germans here, but it doesn't really mean anything. If another German unit can, or Axis unit of some sort can slip in there, that's going to be very helpful. But I'm kind of running low on units in terms of garrisoning the ports um, in, in North Italy. You can see the Spaniards launched forward in conjunction with the U.S. armor to make an, a, a couple of attacks. Nothing much good happening there. And this guy's kind of at risk. He's in supply, but... Mm, if things kind of get cut a little bit more, it could be problematic. I don't know. I mean, really, he's the most likely unit to get hit and pushed back the way things are, so I guess he's okay. We had some bombing runs. The U.S. didn't do very well. They went for uh, the stuff within the range of the fighter and, and took some damage, and I decided to call it off. But the Brits launched two bombing runs up here, out of range of the German fighter. One, two, three, four, five. And it doesn't matter that it's terrible weather. They can still do them, as far as I can tell. It puts us to the Soviets in the back end of the turn. And enough points left for some diplomacy. The Axis managed to pick off Sweden with their pro-Axis marker. I don't remember how they got that sucker in the cup. Uh, probably from knocking Russia out. I'm not sure. Uh, the Allies threw support markers in in favor of the Soviets. And then the Soviets had enough money to draw. However, they got a no event. And uh, Sweden remains strictly neutral again. 
forgot to report on the uh, Germans actually tried to intercept one of the not the American fleet the English fleet here I think this oh no there was a convoy going off on its own a British convoy the British and Americans had convoys they used slipping them through Gibraltar um, to get supplies well this is within range of a German interception they went for the bear convoy. The, these con, uh, convoys have become kind of problematic now um, because if they're over here on the east they're pretty safe they can just slip through the Suez. If they're over here on the west well they still need military support and so do these guys and that's kind of the problem is I don't have enough ships enough warships to cover all my convoys very well. If I, uh, you know, if I take France, that's going to all be fixed, but I don't think France is going to fall anytime soon. We'll see. But there's a lot of Germans here. Uh, I think enough to tie down the Spaniards. I'm more likely to see a breakthrough in Italy, but the Germans will be able to recoup and fight in North Italy, even if they get pushed back there, I think. I probably should throw another German unit in the line, though up here or something just because I don't think this guy's in the safest of places although with that German with that Italian terrain it's pretty damn hard to push things um, so we may just be waiting for the Soviets to come in for there to be any kind of break in the action uh, any, any real crack in the uh, German fortress which you know in a lot of ways makes sense I mean Imagine if World War II was fought just by the Allies for large stretches uh, in, in that key later era. Yeah, sure, I got a lot of ability to throw units into places, but I just don't have this massive manpower to, to really force the Germans into uh, significant problems. You know, the line they have here is so weakened because of what I've had to throw into France, what I've had to throw into Italy, that once the Soviets come in, I think it's going to start rolling up pretty quickly. Well, not terribly bad weather brought uh, mixed results for the Germans. On the first side of things, strategic warfare, they kind of lost out on that. They're beginning to actually accumulate some losses. And as long as the bombing campaign can continue, it's fairly likely they're just going to be being worn down by that. Whereas the Allies are pretty much able to hold even. And the real danger here is that the Russians can win one and the Allies win one. So my factory losses go up by two, which is something that, you know, normally doesn't happen. Uh, the good weather meant attacks into Spain were actually quite successful. And we were able to destroy, what, the free French armor? A U.S. armor unit, uh, along with a number of Spanish forces, the, dropped the Spanish will down to only two. One more city, a couple more units, it's all over. Well, it's all over in the sense that there won't be any more Spanish troops. But Spain as an uh, entry point for the Allies is still present, however. And, I mean, you know, they're... U.S. national will counts, too. Now, that gets knocked out. I don't think they get knocked out of the war, if my memory serves me correct. But they get a collapse, which means a lot of their units get uh, this, get flipped over. And they're just in a situation where uh, they have to rebuild their war effort. They have to recommit to it. And uh, the problem, though, is over here in Italy. That did not go well. They launched an attack against this armor. They lost the air duel, and they lost the battle badly. And now it looks like the entire Italian uh, front may well collapse. And I don't have the troops anywhere. I really just don't. I've had to strip these Yugoslavs, went running into Spain out of Bordeaux. Now there's like landing possibilities back here. I don't know, you know, do the allies want to take advantage of that? Maybe, maybe. Uh, if they're set up for, I don't know if they have any troops, I don't think they have anything, just this, which is probably out of range, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10. I think I can, uh, 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 but I can't land right away. So I'd have to shift, I'd have to transfer their unit, and then it's been committed and can't invade immediately. I can move ships around and do things with them pretty easily. Um, but yeah, I have to have it within two sea zones. So I've got some stuff in America that's actually closer. If this situation persists, I would be able to make a landing there. Hey, I don't know if I have a, yeah, I have a surprise attack. I didn't know if I'd gotten it back yet. Um, but Italy's looking very, very positive. And there is the possibility of launching an attack here uh, into the Balkans. I think things look really, really hard on the Germans, even though they had that big success in Spain at this point. Um, and, uh, well, I guess that's about it, actually. You know, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, I was mentioning, you know, my mistakes at one point. And uh, Sal looked over, I think, agrees with the things that I, I made mistakes on that I pointed them out. Uh, one that's apparently made it into the errata is the Russian units that got destroyed here. Those would have been repatriated. There's a special rule for that. It's not in the printed rules, though, so, you know. But it's just kind of a weird situation that you say, well, you know, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You could certainly have house ruled that on your own and the errata makes sense to me. Um, anyway, with all the flaws I made, and one of, one of the big ones, you know, he agrees that, hey, probably Russia would not have fallen a second time with all those infantry. Well, actually, he stipulates that. I am still kind of torn on it because if those units are on the front line, they are more likely to die than the good units. However, a denser front line is harder to get a real crack a, a unit with. Um, so I think chances are he's right that uh, Soviets wouldn't have fallen. Um, but there are a lot of things that you can kind of see something like that as. Because a game like this as a simulation of what-ifs and whatnot can never take all the what-ifs into account. So in a way, I kind of look at my mistakes as the way of fueling some of those what-ifs. So I look at those German, those Russian units that never reappeared. Well, they should have happened, um, I think it was after the collapse, but uh, if that's, you know, it's quite possible that Soviet collapse would be more extreme than, it was, than is projected in the game. There's no reason to believe one way or another, you know? <laughs> what the effects would be. It could have been, they're knocked out of the war completely. So, I don't really mind when I'm making mistakes like that when I'm playing in a game that has a lot of what if. But what it can do is it can completely throw off the game balance, which I have the feeling in this has been very, very carefully uh, worked with to try to make sure that there's not a huge advantage to say East first. Um, and certainly I'm not seeing any indication that that's the case. Even with the Soviets collapsing twice, we're still seeing uh, a significant threat on, on the Germans from just the Allies. And the Soviets do come back in again and again and again. They're like zombies. Hmm. All right, anyway. <clears throat> so despite the use of uh, paratroopers down here, and unfortunately it shows this hex, thinking this would be where the fighting would come. I'd have multiple attacks then possibly another one cutting through there. Um, I did not manage to destroy that German armor or even knock it back, which you know means no loss of will, but it also, the paratroopers survived. They'll be back, but it's like five turns. I didn't gain any ground here, so no big advantage there. Over in Spain, things are looking ugly. I had to move an armor unit, the American armor, to support this Spanish unit. Not for any really terrible, great reason, because to tell you the truth, Madrid can fall immediately. Spain loses, uh, what, two more points, and they're out of the war. But I would like to maintain something of a line, so I kind of set this up, try to maintain uh, at least the East Coast, maybe the West Coast as well, who knows. Uh, but it looks like Spain is going to be a difficult uh, prospect to hold on to with the Allies. 
just not enough units and too expensive to maintain them in place with the uh, supply rule. So even that good terrain, it's just not doing it for me. However, a successful crossing into Istanbul and uh, I shifted my navy up there. One really nice thing for the Allies at this point, because I used the German surface fleet to interdict something last turn, just a convoy that was on its own, I mean, if I don't do that, it doesn't make much difference at all. Now the Allies can sail around without, convo without uh, escorts, without any worries whatsoever. Bombing was somewhat effective. We got hits here, here, here. Uh, you can see some damage on the Americans was carrying over. The Brits just covering that northern stuff stuff. On to the Russians and really the end of the turn process. There's nothing for them to do here. All right, now here we are in uh, just entering January of 44. Uh, like I said, not a lot for the Russians, just some shifting forces. More than they've been doing every other turn recently, but... Uh, politically though, interesting diplomacy. Germany opened things up drawing a chit. Maybe they shouldn't have. They got the political failure chit. And that just causes them problems because Greece went pro-Western. There is a question, of course, of which of the allied factions gets to modify that. In, in this case, it, basically if it's Russia alone, Russia gets to pick it. Otherwise, it's pro-Western by my understanding of it. But certainly with Russia not, you know, with the Moscow Treaty in effect, it's more likely that the Allies are going to get... So they drew, and they got a no effect. They would have liked to have thrown Greece into the war. That would really destabilize uh, the defense of, of the Bosporus here, which looks like it's kind of teetering. In fact, the best hope right now for the Allies seems to be in there because we're having such a hard time going through Italy. And like I said, Spain is... It's Looks like it's collapsing. I should be able to hold a front there, but you know, I'm going to have this annoying pocket I have to maintain against the Germans. There's just so many not, uh, German forces that without the Russians to take them on, there's a lot of room to spread them out in defensive locations. Um, and then for the Russians, they pulled a, a success chit pro-Soviet Sweden now. And again, this is the same as before. I kind of want to move that over. Now, if the two uh, allied factions were working together more carefully, it would be quite possible that you would have seen uh, the Russians willing to throw a political success into the couple. The Germans can use that then to counter whatever the effect, in the hopes of bringing Greece in as more important maybe than Sweden. Sweden's got more pieces though, I think. Uh, must not. Yeah, Greece is not a big country at all. So we're talking about an infantry, I think. Unless that's got a yellow. No, it doesn't have a triangle. Um, so you're not gonna, you know, see a major advantage by bringing some of these countries into play for the most part. Um, and yeah, new, new forces were put into the uh, little chip boxes. One thing that feels kind of funny, I, I think it's okay, but there's this randomization, you know, when when do you get your naval, you know, resources back, etc. I almost feel like there should be a uh, an ability to influence those die rolls with some production points. Um, because, so for example, maybe not so much with the ground support, but with the surface action. If the Germans committed themselves to a stronger naval uh, presence, they might be able to, you know, it would make sense that they would be able to spend their repair points on that just as they would if the counters were on the map. Uh, for a simplification and abstraction, I think it all works fine. It's just if certain uh, resources become more valuable to you, you might want to not, you might want to be able to modify them. Others, though, it becomes harder to justify having much control over. So, for example, the Partisans. I find it really nice that the Partisans aren't just some resource that I can buy in this game, like they are in most strategic World War II games that I can remember. Most, of course, being, you know, the three that I have played a decent amount of. Uh, the Third Reich line, including Advance, the World in Flames line, and Hitler's War. Those are really the only ones uh, that I think I've really played. Might be wrong there. 
um, which is strange because I always see it uh, this well axis and allies but you know um, it, it's strange because I always see this as you know one of the great struggles that I, I, I should, and there are so many World War II games out there in general, and I have so damn many of them, uh, even more when you look at the magazine games, because I'm more willing to buy things I'm uninterested in. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of strange to, for me to look at it and say, yeah, you know, I've got, uh, I've only got three, three big strategic World War II games, and, and then one additional one. So maybe there is room for more. <laughs> Certainly there's room for this one. It fills a niche that uh, I haven't, I, I, I definitely enjoy seeing filled. Well, January opens up with some pretty crappy weather. Uh, the severes mean I can't use the planes for anything, among other things. Uh, measured a, a failure in Italy in general. And over in Spain, however, a lot of success knocked Spain out of the war. Just turn some of these around. Um, this Yugoslav unit's in supply because I'm tracing through here. Grabbing Madrid is what finished Spain off. Push the Allies back a little deeper. Can't see right when I'm looking through the camera. Ah. Uh, I couldn't, I pushed these uh, air units a little closer in to provide some support. That's not going to matter this turn, but it might on some later turn. And I've got plenty of points right now to rebuild things, so that's not a terrible thing. The strategic warfare went poorly for the Germans, though so they're up to a minus five. So they're going to start feeling the effects of it pretty heavily. And as long as the Allies can keep that bombing run going, it's going to be tough. Uh, they also spent partisans in order to... Uh, affect that die roll, which makes things rough as well. We'll see what the Allies actually do. I'm suspecting there's going to be some counter air just to knock this out, uh, and then probably move this, uh, what is it, 12th Army Air Force? Uh, trying to get it towards Spain, where I think there's going to be more, uh, more advantageous effects. I've got two to one planes in Italy, I don't, or three to one, I don't need that. Two to one's fine. If I can get air, air power over to Spain, that'll help my situation significantly. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. We'll see where Greece lands after all of this goes. That's going to be of some interest. But we'll see what the Allies can do in terms of punching their way through. Not a lot of excitement in the Allied turn. Um, did manage to knock out a Yugoslav unit here. Here, it's just so stalemated. It's ugly without the air power. I'm not going to breach through. Over here, again, kind of the similar type of situation. I canceled out the German air just to cost them more, more than anything. Uh, unescorted convoy got hit by the surface raiders here, or surface ships again. Not too big a deal. I could launch it again afterwards, from what I can tell. Uh, but instead, I chose to take the low supply on one unit I wasn't able to supply after getting hit with two rounds of combat in two different sea zones by the sea, by the surface raiders. That's how I'm interpreting it. I'm not sure that's what's intended, uh, whether it can make multiple interceptions. If not, it's pretty weak, actually. Um, otherwise, though, not a lot going on. I've shifted some more bombers into play, and the bombers I got have dropped into a couple of places, mainly they're doing damage to the German fighters, actually. And yes, the bombers have penalties against them, but uh, like convoys do, but eh, sometimes bad rolls can come. And we polish things off with the Germans being able to use diplomacy to knock uh, Greece back into neutrality. The Allies throw the political success back in the cup. There was only one in there, along with a no event, of course. And then the Soviets try to draw, hoping to maybe bring Sweden into the war. Uh, no go there. So, kind of working out uh, fairly ineffectually as far as diplomacy. I'm leaving the Moscow Treaty until next turn, just to roll for it. 
because I feel like uh, that's got the opportunity to change a lot and I don't want to do it ahead of time particularly. All right, rolling into February of 44, um, Moscow Treaty is still in effect, so we're not going to have the Soviets charging over. It's kind of interesting the way it collapses. It's just, it's not going to collapse, say, with a Russian surprise attack, just because of the nature of the turns. It's going to collapse, and the Germans have the opportunity to start the war. And that's always going to be the case, unless you, you know, made some home rules for yourself because you thought that situation might be a little weird. Um, anyway. The, given that, to me, it feels as though a Soviet attack would more likely be the act of action starting uh, a situation like that. The Germans probably don't want to restart the war, so they probably would not get the first strike. Uh, you can never guarantee things like that, but it, it does feel a little funny to me, and that would be something I would consider as maybe a, uh, you know, little house rule, hey... If the Soviets do collapse, do surrender in the Moscow Treaty, uh, the Germans wouldn't be allowed to attack them on that first turn that it ends. Uh, I have no idea, of course, how that would affect uh, <laughs> the advantages and disadvantages. I think it's a finely balanced game as it is, and uh, Sal has indicated that this is the tougher strategy for the Axis to go east first. It certainly feels tough. Uh, I don't know if it's tougher, given that I, you know, left some Soviet units off the board and managed to knock them out a second time, but I feel this real pressure at lasting to there. I think I might be able to do it. Uh, you can never tell. I mean, I got 50, nearly 60 will left. Anyway, the other thing of note, and this is scary, is how hard the uh, strategic warfare is hitting. Now, both the Reds and the West threw special counters in which have the German rolls. Uh, but this is really cutting into the German production. So this turn, Germany only has 28. They're further back for next turn. That's going to be 8, 12. They're going to be down to 24. It's going to be really hard to maintain a war, especially against the Soviets, with that kind of uh, uh, point total. The Soviets themselves, well, they're at 20, but that, that's undoubled. They're going to be at 40 when they come in. So that gives you an idea. And then, you know, the Western allies, the U.S. has infinite. It doesn't matter too much. They don't have a whole hell of a lot of pieces. But Britain's up there at 32. That's enough to actually do what they want to do most of the times. I'm not in those drought years where uh, where I was, uh, you know, eh, can I afford the Western deployment force and some planes down here? Nah. They, they can pretty much afford to supply all their units with the convoys and such. Not. Okay, tough. Uh, yeah. Good turn for the Germans, but tough decisions here. In particular, I didn't launch any attacks in Italy or uh, near Istanbul. Uh, Istanbul, I'm not really in a position to do so. Italy, I kind of was, but when I look at the numbers here, just in terms of trying to hit an armored U.S. unit in that kind of terrain, I don't want to do that. Let them expend their effort doing that. It's not really a matter that I don't want to waste the production. It's just there's too good a chance I might actually hurt my unit and then collapse the line that way, whereas it's pretty solid um, as a defensive structure. But you can see Spain got broken wide open. We killed the U.S. 7th Army and uh, whatever this Gibraltar garrison is back here. Yeah, Gibraltar may fall if we're not careful. Um, encirclement, destruction willpower losses. U.S. is down to six. Uh, they don't have the greatest will to remain in the war ever. <laughs> um, compare that to the British big old 19. Uh, oh, I forgot to give Germany a point of will or points of will for Spain. <sighs> That'll help them. Um, this I know where to look it up. I've done it enough times. Not Spain in particular, but so I think it's four points of national will, which is a nice 
nice boost that'll that'll make Germany a little bit more resilient here they would also get troops but there's no, no more left um, and well I can't really move any Yugoslavs in in Italy but I pulled a German garrison down one thing I noticed is I've pulled the German garrison out of Hamburg uh, Kiel uh, is also open there's really kind of a risk of an invasion here or up in Denmark or whatever by the Allies, except they're out of troops. The commitment to Spain has pretty much guaranteed that this kind of adventurism probably isn't going to happen. Now, if this gets much more open, it would. <laughs> I mean, one garrison here is not uh, sufficient. However... Um, Quite a bit of damage could be done in terms of, you know, grabbing uh, cities that affect will, but maybe even Berlin. But that's still only four points. Um, losing an invasion, and it would eventually be lost, I believe, uh, for that kind of goal. When I've got a good place to throw my troops into and fight, well, maybe not that good anymore. Um, I mean, I'm the one who's going to be responsible as the allies for cutting through that horrible terrain because the Germans have already paid their price pushing through it. But I'm just stretched too thin. I've got too many commitments in the Mediterranean. I, I can't do it. So maybe the Russians can. <laughs> yeah. You know, I built the convoy down here. Now, I could remove this and rebuild the entire thing up here but I built it down here because I felt like an invasion into the Balkans might be possible or there might be a need to resupply to supply through the Balkans for some reason uh, unlikely but eh, a little end run or something could be of some value I was actually contemplating that but it's ugly to uh, it's a good way to lose units <laughs> and will Will may not be an issue anymore for the Russians. Anyway, we'll go to the Allies. And the Western Allies. They destroy one of the German unit down here uh, in Naples. Or, yeah, infantry in Naples. But the U.S. armor got itself in an ouch position. Kind of pinned against here. I was trying to be, I don't know, I guess too cute. Uh... No advances over here. That's fine. Wasn't expecting much there. Reposition in armor in Valencia. Sailed someone new into uh, Gibraltar. Gonna try to hold this front as much as I can, but you know, at this point it almost feels like there's too many German units down there for what they're facing, especially two armored units and an air uh, wing there. But if I leave up, if I loosen that up too much, that could grow into a really festering situation. There's always going to be a problem with Spain, though, which is the Allies can invade in it whenever they like, unless I garrison all the these ports and all the French ports. And I'm just not, I mean, that this force is basically sufficient to um, garrison the port regions, and that's you know that uh, that would tie it all down i don't want to do that i'm already stretching thin you can see the allies managed a significant bombing campaign through the valleys and uh, just a lot coming soviets get to move again and then we get to do all the kind of end of turn fun okay so the big event this turn sweden comes in um the russians well Germans failed to pull a chip. Western allies dropped a political success into the cup, one with a no effect. Russians picked one. Bang. Now we have this. Now, problem is I'm still not going to be able to get my Norwegians down because they, well, is there a rail or something? No. Unless I have some sort of naval uh, opportunity without my convoy up there, I can't move them into anything useful and they can't garrison Sweden however it does free up I'll have a couple of Swedish infantry and perhaps a garrison if I want to try and harass through Denmark that's not going to be a big deal but I'm beginning to really regret having this convoy down here 
um, simply because if I start could start shipping troops into Denmark, Russian units, that would be a big deal. That would be a really big deal. And of course, also, I could use that ship to move the Norwegians or whatever, or Finns if they come in. But I'm not as uh, excited about that idea as, uh, uh, as I would be about getting Russian troops there. The problem, well, the Germans have a surface fleet counter that they could use. I think the Russians do too. I have a surface action counter that I could use uh, to support the convoy by, and defend it against the German fleet. The German fleet's superior, though. Um, but that would be a further element to kind of freeze the German fleet and prevent it from hunting a convoy here and there for the Western Allies if I could present that threat or a reasonable threat. And if that fleet happens to be gone, I can just start shipping stuff in. Yeah, what about supplies though? Okay, good point. That's gonna be rough without the convoy in place. So I don't really see that, but I do see some limited ability to act uh, in Copenhagen at least. It was the most exciting thing I could do. <laughs> uh, the only other option is to play for Portugal and get another unit down here in infantry or whatever. That also is overall a positive, but it's harder for the Western Allies to activate something because they can set something up for the Soviets to activate in the sense of putting chits in the cup that the Soviets have. Plus, the Soviets have a couple of countries they could call in right away. So, if we manage to ever get naval power in the Baltic, and here, here's one of the things. That German fleet, that serves as a counterbalance to the Russians ever being able to do naval actions. They can never kind of knock it out. You know the way the Italian fleet got knocked out? Well, you can't knock the German fleet out because, well, you could say well, that the German, you know, uh, strategic policy with the, their navy would allow it to always exist. Well, what about the Russians? You know, what if they came, it, how, how do you stop the whole Russian fleet? You kind of need to commit most of the German fleet and it could get badly damaged that way. I, abstractions that I don't want to think too hard about because I do enjoy the game, and I don't think that they hold up too well under a lot of uh, analysis. I think they're not terrible, but uh, sometimes it's hard to get so many moving pieces working well. And it certainly does a better job than some more detailed games do. <laughs> Of, of covering the Navy, especially World War One games that I can think of uh, that really screw the pooch on that. So I'm probably not going to be able to do much in the way of an invasion of Denmark beyond Copenhagen, and that doesn't really do anything, but I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, without some sort of naval support, I don't see that this is going to help me either. Oh, well. Uh, some new units coming in for the Germans. These paratroopers, they'll be up next turn. Those are not like the paradrop units. This is just really an elite infantry as far as I can tell from the game. We got jets, which are going to be a one turn, kind of like tanks. You use them, you can use them again next turn. They had a plus two to the combat die rolls for any air or naval combat involving German planes. I'm not really convinced that German jets would be particularly helpful in anti-naval actions, but they have a bonus there. Uh, certainly an anti-air, even offensive maybe. And then we're gonna get an elite, what is this, an upgrade? Nope, an elite SS uh, armor uh, to build. And I guess next video we find out if the Ruskies come in.